One of the biggest pieces of evidence that I've been aware of about Epstein's case is that he had the hyoid bone fracture in his neck, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the bones where it, I could be wrong, but I think they did like a, I read one time there was a study across all the hanging, hangings across, mm -hmm. a, they, they took a bunch of hanging victims and that hyoid bone was only broken in like a small subset Very of small. those hangings. Yeah. And, um, I guess there has to be a ton of trauma for the specific bone to break. Yeah. And in his neck, it was broken. Yeah, it was. And it's not just his hyoid bone. He's got two uh, uh, fractures of his cartilage um, in his larynx, which if you find your Adam's apple, it's like right in, in its bilateral. So you've got a fracture. And again, using this term, they're both in the, they're both in the vertical plane. Mm -hmm. So you've got one here. You got one here, and mm -hmm. then the hyoid. Hyoid's an interesting bone. It's a. Uh, it's the only bone in the human body that does not articulate with another bone. Just let that sink in for a second. It's sole, stationary. Mm -hmm, yeah, in soft tissue, its sole purpose, actually, it anchors our tongue in the back of our throat. It holds it in place, and it's bird. Oh wow! It's kind of bird-like in shape, mm -hmm. um, and it's got a. <laughs> It's got two greater horns and two lesser horns. And um, some people describe it as a bird-like structure. Some people say that it's got a uh, uh, the appearance of, uh, of a horseshoe. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of crescent-shaped, okay? So it's anchoring the tongue back here. The, the one of the, uh, let me just run down the list. Yeah. One of the problems is, is with hyoid, one of the reasons you don't see it commonly fractured in in hangings is that it's so high up in the neck. Right. I mean, it is superior just about to everything else right here. Mm -hmm. um, I borrowed this cord real quick. Of course. If it's not anchored in something. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of it can right pull here. out, yeah. Sorry. So let's just, let's just think about for a second, uh, classic hanging, okay? Mm -hmm. So classic hanging, um, you have to be most of the time suspended or partially suspended. So if you think about a noose, it's better if you use your hand. Mm -hmm. Think about a noose mm -hmm. that runs up like this, okay? And it goes up generally behind your ears, okay? And it comes to an apex back here. And that's what, in our parlance, um, so what we refer to as a uh, tinting feature, it's T-E-N-T-I-N-G. So you get this apex at the top right here. It travels upward, comes to an apex right here, and all your body weight essentially is being supported by this location right here, mm -hmm. okay? Suspended. Now, you can have a partial suspension Okay, um, the medical examiner in uh, New York, OCME, referred to it as a soft hanging, which to me implies that you're not suspended like sure. classic. You can sit, and yes, people hang themselves by sitting. Aside from gunshot wounds relative to suicides, hanging in my little slice of the pie was... Uh, the most frequent mode because everybody owns a ligature. Not everybody owns a gun. Everybody owns a ligature. You can make them. I've seen them made out of like bed a rope sheets, or something. rope, yeah. belt. Belt is very common. So with that said, uh, how do you get the hyoid fractured so high and particularly so that you, um, you have to have enough velocity to drop and get this thing to fracture. Now, one of the things that she said was that he, due to his age, that she mm -hmm. believes that his hyoid had ossified to the point where it was fragile. Okay, I'll, I'll go down that road with you, but how are you going to explain these fractures here in kind of the soft, more malleable uh, cartilage? And it's running, Danny, it's running bilateral. They're running north and south, vertical plane right here, and they're on the either, either side. It takes that kind of pressure in order to do that or maybe a readjustment. Also, the ligature mark that he has on his neck right. does not go 
up and down. It's horizontal? Running parallel to the shoulders wow. like this. You don't have this thing that's going up behind his ears like you normally see. I got to tell you, when I'm just looking at the images, and anybody can see these images. These are just public images that you found. Yeah, you know where they come from? The 60-minute special that was ran back in, what was it, 19 or whenever it was. They yeah. Did. And I was, you could knock me over with a feather because you got to see all of these images and the interior of the cell. Mm -hmm. They're out there. Just check them out for yourself. Don't believe a damn thing I say. Right. right. Just go look at them. Um, so if you're trying to sell me on the idea that, first off, he has hung himself and you're absent the tinting feature. What did he do? Did he lay down flat on the floor and the ligature went around his neck? And it looks like the ligature has been readjusted because you've got this kind of deep, it's it's an, an abraded furrow. Yeah, there you go right there. This abraded furrow. This Again, running, Steve, don't put this on the podcast. That's running parallel, as you can well see. Do you see how one mark is low? Right there, it's yeah, really dark. Yep, the, it looks like it was and then adjusted. Another one, and then you've got another one that is superior that comes to like a little point right there. The sink's been moved in some way, and it's more dependent on his right side as opposed to the left side. Yeah, um, and there's that's another kind of mark up there by his jaw. Yeah, I, I'll give you another one, and this is available out there. Do you know he's got a, a deep tissue bruise right here in his trap? Really? Yeah, it's right here. You can see it. It's it's out there on the images too. How do? Because I got to tell you, I've I don't know. What did he do? Bump into a wall backwards? I I, I don't know right. how you get this manifestation. Yeah, that's it right there. I don't know how you get that manifestation right there because it doesn't correlate with what you're seeing on the front. I, I just I have you you mentioned the study about the fractured hyoids. Yep. Um. Why does, he have, why does he have facial hair in the second one? Not the first one. No, that's the back of his head. Oh, that's the back of his yeah, head. Yeah, that's like descending down the back right there. Um, I've had one fractured hyoid uh, that was not related to manual strangulation. You know what it was? A guy went over a three-story uh, off-ramp in New Orleans. Three-story, two-story, doesn't matter. But in like a 1968 Pontiac that had the gigantic steering wheel, you know, like mammal drives, mm -hmm. you know, like this. Um, oh, non, he non lined himself non, on it. Non belted. He nose dived into the ground, and the 12 o'clock position of the steering wheel hit him right here, and it fractured his hyoid. It doesn't mean that it it does happen. Okay, again, it's just my my little slice of the world. Um, but again, how do you account for this injury? Um, here, it's almost like there were two modalities being being utilized here, mm -hmm. or methodologies, rather. Um, a ligature and possibly either throttling. This is this is throttling. Yeah. Okay, you can do it either anteriorly, okay, or you can do it posteriorly. Um, this is C-clamping, where you do this like this. Yeah. So do you have some kind of fight that's going on uh, with – I don't know, himself. I have no idea. How do you get these manifestations injury wise? Right. In the neck. You know, Bodden was present. Dr. Michael Bodden was present for the autopsy. He right. he is Yeah, explain who he retained is. Retained by Mark, I think it's Mark. Hope that's right. Mark, Mark Epstein? Epstein, who is the brother. Uh, this guy's brother. So he was physically there. Um and his conclusions varied from hers. Uh you know, you can say, well, yeah, Mark's got a, a a dog in the fight. Sure. I don't, he's not, I don't think it's a matter of him looking for money or anything like that. He thinks his brother was a victim of homicide. That's the reason he retained Dr. Bodden. You just don't go off the street and say, hey, uh, want to go to an autopsy, Dr. Bodden? He's been retained. Okay. So he's working for Mark or he's Mark's eyes and ears at a very high end. Um, he's worked multiple over the course of his career, he was the chief medical examiner for the state of New York. I think he was either the deputy or chief medical examiner for the city of New York for a time. He consults on cases all over the country. I don't agree with everything that all of the conclusions he's reached in his life. The Michael Brown case in particular comes to mind. Um, 
but he is respected. And he was physically there to watch this autopsy being performed, this examination. So he just, he just watched it. Yeah. It's not like he's participating. Right. And I've, I've, I've been present for autopsies like that where you have an, uh, an interested third party mm -hmm. that will be there. And most of the time, there'll be some chatter, but most of the time, they're merely observing. It's not like he went in and actually did the dissection of the neck, mm -hmm. okay, where you're taking out the organs of the neck, as they're referred to. That's going to be part of OCME's team that does that, and they'll retain them. I hope they've retained them. I hope they've retained uh, the larynx. I hope they've retained the hyoid bone. Mm -hmm. hope that didn't go with his body, you know, to be cremated, which it has been, and then placed uh, in uh, – there's a, a – you know, a cemetery here in Florida where his remains are. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're in a, a vase, Voss, um, you know, stuffed into one of these places. Stuffed, that's not accurate, but it's placed in there yep. and it's unmarked. Um, so, yeah, I hope that those essential elements were retained um, so that, I don't know, if it comes up again, somebody else, another person can take a look at it. But you kind of lose... You know, we were talking about a little while ago how, you know, you have you don't have a sense for what happened, you know, five years ago or whatever. Yeah, That's that's the way things work out in forensics many times. You have to go back and review years and years and yeah. years from now. And I, I don't know whether kind of conclusions they'll draw. Um, I haven't personally seen the autopsy photographs at all. Uh, I think that that would be quite interesting, you know, to see. Um who you try to understand. Are they, I'm sure they're still somewhere where you can get, if you wanted to get access to them, could you? I don't know. I don't know how the laws are set up with state of state of New York. I don't know if you can uh, file a FOIA request and, and actually get those or not. What other elements of this suicide murder uh, do you find most interesting other the than ligature the ligature they're going? trying to sell me on? The ligature. Yeah, that that piece of cloth. Uh, which the the corrections officer claimed that he claimed, not Morgan, the corrections claimed officer. that he cut it away. Well, the ligatures that you that you see like this go, one go right to here, the, go to that orange thing. Yeah, punch it has it, punch it, it on has that. no tool marks on it at all. It hasn't been cut. All right, so I don't know, and you can see the base knot right there is tied. It's still intact. I'm assuming that he used some kind of odd slip knot there i can't manipulate to hold it to try to understand yeah. it but um that's not that has not been cut this guy claims that it had been um again how are you where are you going to tie off from in there in order to generate this kind of force in order to have this level of trauma that was supposed to be inflicted by that thing there and was it collected was it collected and that there was transfer evidence on it that's indicative of in multiple locations? So if it's going circumferentially, you know, going around the mm -hmm. neck, or there are multiple points where you're collecting DNA specific to this injury, you look at that, the area on his neck, and Danny, it's abraded. It, it's like an abrasion. So it's very deep. Uh, not only just trace elements or touch DNA, I'm talking about do they actually have. Did they actually find skin? Did they actually find hair, mm. you know, from facial hair from his neck? Uh, is Was any of that stuff retained? Did they examine all of that? I, I, inquiring minds want to know. I, mm. I want to know about this, you know, and try to understand it and try to understand it. And then you got the time element that's involved. You know, when they got to his body, he was cool to the touch. You know, he'd been down for some time. Um and he's cyanotic. You know, you can see they've actually got photos of him being wheeled in, if I rem memory serves me correctly. And he's got kind of the eggplant head, which you see with uh, people that are in a cyanotic state, you know, where they're turning purple, you know, like this. So something has happened that's compromised his airway. Could it be suicide? Yeah, sure. It could be. But if I were a betting man. You would say murder. Uh at or this point, I'd say un, undetermined, mm -hmm. perhaps. Right. I'd have to know more information. problem with working anything in a correctional facility is that it's very difficult. I've worked, I've worked cases in correctional facilities, 
and it is not the most ideal set of circumstances to be in. Have you ever- <laughs>